so yeah, speaking of tools, so how do we actually put this together? Like where, where do we organize this? Like are there tools out there that can help? Um, I've heard System Hub, System Hub is quite good. So we dove into that. Uh, we, yeah, as I was just saying, we used to use a, a project management tool called Teamwork. And it, it's awesome. Like they're all awesome. They're all absolutely fantastic. And they kind of, their marketing kind of preys on that you want to be optimized and systemized. So they'll, they'll talk about how life is so much better within their tool and how they've solved all these problems. But, and the, the key reason that people keep switching between these kind of things, I don't know if anyone in this room does this, but I do that all the time. I have so many like just failed trial signups and all these tools that keep reminding me to log into them. Like, wow, I don't remember signing up to that. But um, I've kind of, I've divorced myself from that a little bit uh, to be able to just really focus and double down on, on System Hub and Asana and it's, it's working great. One, to be able to keep uh, project management separate from systems means that we could potentially, I'm going to try not to because my team would kill me, but change project management to a different tool down the track. We don't, because our systems are all in one place, they're all organized in a way that's simple and makes sense. Like we don't need all these crazy uh, bells and whistles where if you click on a, a checkbox with the, the system tool, it's going to notify everyone on the team. Like there are tools out there that can do these crazy things, but, but why? If you're like, how is that going to help the team? And it means you're really locked into that particular piece if you want to change. Um, I do some contracting for a company that, that coaches like web designers um, to, to build better businesses and they were using a tool like that. They put all of their systems um, into this one particular tool and their project management into this one thing and then I was doing some coaching with um, some of, their, some of their, um, their students about how to create processes and I was like, oh, just, just create a simple document and just write it. If you need a pen and paper, just do that. And that was like, that was actually a bit of a light bulb moment for them. Cause they're like, every time we want to make something new and train someone, we have to go into this tool, follow their process, have all these check boxes, link that to Zapier to do all this crazy automation stuff. It sounds great, but at the initial level, when you just want to get stuff done and you're not in the optimizing stage, you don't need all of that stuff. Like it, it sounds attractive and all the, the sales pages for these tools, they, they wrote me in anyway. Um, just avoid that. You don't need that at this stage, right? Like maybe down the track if you're solving a new problem. <laughs> so keep them separate. So system documentation is about the outcome, okay? A perfectly bake, baked cake is what we want at the end of this. We don't do that in my business, but this is just an example from Dave that I stole. Um, <laughs> we don't do it enough in my business is what I mean. Uh, so perfectly baked cake. So that's the outcome that we want at the end of this. And we start the process with what the outcome is going to be. Like what are we actually going to deliver as part of this? That's not the end of it. That's the beginning. We want to know what does success look like. When we finish this, a perfectly baked cake is what we're going to get. Now, here's how you go about doing that. So your project management tool is who does what by when. So this is completely blurry, but Amy, who's uh, on my team on Tuesday, has to get the design approval and sign off for this particular project and if you can see this blurry blue mess over here is a link to that particular system in System Hub. So it's not within this project management tool where like how would we be able to maintain that? We could have 10 projects, 100 projects on, where would that system, where would the one place where that system is that gets edited and changed and optimized and where can we make sure there's one point of truth for that particular system? Not here, definitely not here. Who does what by when? and then the outcome, okay? When it comes to, I, I did touch on this a little bit, when it comes to what kind of, what you uh, should be looking for in your system documentation tool, it needs to be as efficient as possible to get the job done and that's it. Like it just needs to be simple, it needs to be efficient and it needs to focus on getting that outcome done, okay? It doesn't need all those extra bells and whistles, it just needs to be organized, simple, structured, your team can follow and you don't need to have a new training system in order to learn how to use your new system that you've just implemented. So keep it nice and simple. Project management, again, keep it simple. Like Asana works really well for us. I've used a ridiculous amount of them. Um, I also like do some reviews on tools to make, mean that my addiction can be put out as public as well and that kind of does a bit of marketing for us. So that's fine for me to do that, but you shouldn't unless that's part of your business. But Asana works fine, it's really easy. Um, Something Dave uh, mentioned to me a while ago was like, w when would a project management tool maybe 
like you would, might have resistance to it. I think all businesses could benefit from having a project management tool. I actually tell a lot of my clients to, to use one. We use uh, some project management tools with my clients just for them to get ideas out of their head and put them somewhere, just so they, they know, okay, well that's not on our, on, our flow, on our workflow for this month, that's for next month. Actually, that's something um, that Michael from Digital Thing taught me to do with, with Trello. So we, yeah, I was actually talking to a client just yesterday. He's like, oh, we want to implement, um, we want to implement our Instagram shopping thing and Amazon have been calling me trying to get me on their platform and, and all these different things. And we, we don't want to do that now. The client is freaking out because they want all these things happen, to happen now. So we put them in a tool where, they, where we, they know that's on for next month and we're going to talk about that next month. So it's not for now. So for by, for by when, it's not now. So we need to get that out of their head and into a separate place. So yeah, with the team, they know that uh, they can be assigned to a task to a particular date and then we link back to the system documentation. All right, so that's what we do. So I'm gonna dive into a few more specific examples about how we structure our systems within System Hub. So we've got, uh, I'm not sure if Dave touched on this, but we've got systems, policies, and trainings. So the systems are the, the outcome focused. The policies are more about like how does the team how does the team communicate with each other? Like how do we use Asana? How do we, we use Slack as well for communication. It's not exactly a system that you follow from top to bottom. It's more of like our own workflow. So we put that within the policies section, just structured into like a bit of a handbook, like an employee handbook. I really like that this is all in one place. This isn't another tool. And we, we actually um, created a separate tool before we knew about System Hub. We created a separate tool for a different company for their intranet. We thought, great, we'll use this for just our policies. And then we had our system somewhere else. And then our training was somewhere else as well and our project management somewhere, somewhere else. So to be able to bring these into one system has been really, well, into one tool has been really helpful for us to have it all in one place. Uh, so policies, yeah, a bit of a handbook. And then the trainings, uh, uh, these kind of recordings that would go within to the training section. So you could just have recordings for the team. Uh, you could buy a particular course such as, on, such as like social media management. And instead of actually going through that yourself, if that's something that you do, like that's something that we do, instead of me going through that and thinking, okay, I need to learn that. I need to create the processes. I need to create the overview systems and map it all out. I can give that to, to Amy on my team, put that in our project management tool, say learn this and then document that and let us know the key takeaways. Give us the cliff notes. Do you think you can actually implement this and, and get a result for our client. So now I'm out of that process completely, which to me is more of a psychological barrier than anything else. Um, it's easier said than done to be able to get yourself out of that, but it's really as much as you can, it's, um, it's organizing things that are nice and simple and then just pushing back on your team or hiring someone to do the, these things for you. Don't think that it's the business owner all the time that needs to be doing this hard work. All right, so we've got our department set up here. So start here, uh, that's where I've got templates for um, uh, our system for creating a system. And then, yeah, different templates for how we actually build systems are in my start here section. I've got marketing, sales, finance, operations, HR. I've also got how to, which is like a bit of a knowledge base for us. Something we came up against was um, uh, something as simple as, uh, so like we use WordPress as a content management system. So how to install WordPress locally. Like that's not part of our, like what gets us paid. It's just something that we need to do but there is an efficient way that we know of that makes it really, really easy. So in order to help uh, when I'm onboarding new team members, in order to help answer questions uh, with my team about how to do things, we can just have a bit of a dumping ground for little knowledge-based stuff within how to. And then personal is because I'm just getting addicted to systems, so I'm throwing personal stuff in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then Z later just means it's, Z means it go, goes to the end. And later is all the stuff, it's not part of the CCF. But I just really want to work on it right now and I haven't managed to get past that psychological barrier. But it's, uh, it could be something like um, how we, so like when it comes to like working with a client, like what I was saying before with Michael, um, when it comes to managing our, managing our monthly sprints and having those meetings with a client, well it's not part of the CCF I might be working on with like our e-commerce build. I definitely want to work on it. We're definitely going to do it again, but it is a little bit of a distraction. So I'm going to put that in the Z later folder. I'm just going to throw it in there so that I've, I've captured it. I've chucked it in there and it's somewhere at least. We're going to review it later, but I'm happy that it's somewhere. It's captured. Cool. It's there. We're still implementing the CCF at the moment with, um, in our business, uh, but that just helps me with a bit of sanity. I don't know. I don't think Dave's in the room. So he put, oh, no, he is. 
I don't know if I've ever told you about that, but that's how I'm using it. So there you go. You cool with that? <laughs> All good? You can just edit that part out if that's not allowed. Ten Hail Mary. <laughs> go write ten systems. <laughs>